patricians, patrons of my right, defend the justice of my cause with arms. And countrymen, my loving followers, plead my successive title with your swords. I am the firstborn son, that w was the last that wore the imperial diadem of Rome. Then let my father's honors live in me, nor wrong my age with this indignity. Romans, Fen, Trent, followers, favors of my right, if ever Bassianus, Caesar's son, were gracious in the eyes of royal Rome, keep then this passage to the capital, <clears throat> and suffer not dishonor to approach. The imperial seat to virtue consecrate to justice, continence, and nobility, but let desert and pure election shine, and Romans fight for freedom in your choice. Princes that strive by factions and by friends, ambitiously for rule and emperor. Know that the people of Rome, for whom we stand in election for the Roman emperor, have chosen Andronicus, surnamed Pius, for many great and good deserts to Rome. A nobler man, a braver warrior, lives not this day within the city walls. He by the Senate is a sighted home from weary wars against the barbarous Goths that with his sons a terror to our foes hath yoked a nation strong, trained up in arms. Ten years are spent since first he undertook this cause of Rome, and chastised with arms our enemy's pride. Five times he hath returned, leading to Rome, bearing his valiant sons in coffins from the field. And now at last, laden with horror's spoils, returns the good Andronicus to Rome. Renowned in Titus, flourishing in arms, let us entreat by honor of his name, whom worthily you would have now succeed. And in the capital and senate's rights, whom we pretend to honor and adore, that you withdraw you and abate your strength, dismiss your followers, and as suitors should, plead your deserts in peace and humbleness. How fair the tribune speaks to calm my thoughts. Marcus and Drunkus, <laughs> so I do ally in thy uprightness and integrity, and so I love and honor thee and thine, thy noble brother Titus, and his sons, <clears throat> and her, to whom my thoughts are humbled all. Gracious Lavinia, Rome's rich ornament, that I will here dismiss my loving friends, and to my fortunes and the people favor, commit my cause and balance to be weighed. Friends that have been thus forward in my right, I thank you all and here dismiss you all. And to the love and favor of my country, commit myself, my person, and the cause. Rome, be as just and gracious unto me as I am confident and kind to thee. Open the gates and let me in. Tribunes and me, a poor competitor. Romans, make way. Good Andronicus. Patron of virtue, Rome's best champion, successful in the battles that he fights with honor and with fortune, is returned from where he circumscribed with his sword and brought to yoke the enemies of Rome. Hail Rome! Victorious in thy morning weeds! Lo, as the bark that hath discharged her fraught returns with precious jading to the bay from whence at first she weighed her anchorage, cometh Andronicus. Bound with laurel boughs to re-salute his country with his tears. Tears of true joy for his return to Rome. Thou great defender of this capital, stand gracious to the rights that we intend. Romans, of five and twenty valiant sons, behold the poor remains, alive and dead. These that survived, let Rome reward with love. These that I bring unto their latest home, with burial amongst their ancestors. Here Goths have given me leave to sheathe my sword. Give us the proudest prisoner of the Goths, that we may hew his limbs, and on a pile of manus freight from sacrifice his flesh. No. I give him you. The noblest that survives, the eldest son no. of this distressed no. queen. No. Say, Roman brother, gracious conqueror, Noble Titus, through the tears I shed, a mother's tears and passion for her son. And, and if thy sons were ever dear to thee, think, think not my son to be as dear to me. Sufficient not that we are brought to Rome to beautify thy triumphs and return captive to thee and thy Roman yoke. But must my sons be slaughtered in the streets for valiant doings in their country's cause? Good Andronicus, stain not thy doom with blood. Spare my firstborn son. Patient yourself, madame, and pardon me. These are their brethren whom you Goths beheld alive and dead, and for their brethren slain. Religiously they ask a sacrifice. To this your son is marked, and die he must to appease their groaning shadows that are gone. Ah! And make a fire straight, and with our swords upon a pile of wood, let's hew his limbs so that he clean his sword. Oh, cruel papers, it's just piety. Was ever Scythia half so barbarous? Oh, not Scythia, so vicious wrong. A lot of us goes to rest and we survive. Tremble at each other, but you look. 
I might have sat. This all out with all of them. May the self-same gods arm the Queen of Troy with the opportunity of sharp revenge on the Percy and Tyrant in his tent. Nothing but Tamara, Queen of the Gods. When Goths were Goths, and Tamara was Queen, to quit the bloody wrongs upon her foes. See, Father, how we have performed our Roman rites. The lawless limbs are locked, and entrails feed the sacrificing fire whose smoke like incense doth perfume the sky. Let it be so, and let Andronicus make this his latest farewell <clears throat> to their souls. In peace and honor rest you here, my sons. Here lurks no treason, here no envy swells, here grow no damned grudges, here are no storms, no noise but silence and eternal sleep. In peace and honor rest you here, my sons. In peace and honor live Lord Titus Law. My noble lord and father live in fame. Woe at this too, my tributary tears I render for my brethren's obsequies. And at thy feet I kneel with tears of joy, shed on the earth for thy return to Rome. Kind Rome, that hast thus lovingly reserved the cordial of mine age to glad my heart. Lavinia, live, outlive thy father's days and fame's eternal date for virtue to praise. Long live Lord Titus, my beloved brother, gracious triumpher in the eyes of Rome. Thanks, noble tribune, good brother Marcus. And welcome, nephews, from successful wars, you that survive and you that sleep in fame. Titus Andronicus, the people of Rome, named thee in election for the empire, with these our late deceased emperor's sons. Be Candidatus, then, and set to set a head on headless Rome. A better head her glorious body fits than his that uh, shakes for age and feebleness. Rome, I have been thy soldier forty years and led my country's strength successfully, and buried one and twenty valiant sons, knighted in fields, slain manfully in arms, in right and service of their noble country. Give me a staff of honor for mine age, but not a scepter to control the world. Upright he held it, lords, that held it last. Titus, thou shalt obtain and ask the emperor. Proud and ambitious tribune, canest thou tell? Prince Saturninus, patience. Romans, do me right. Patricians, draw your swords and sheath them not till Saturninus be Rome's emperor. Andronicus, would thou work shit to hell rather than rob me of the people's hearts? Proud <laughs> Saturnine, interrupter of the good, the noble minded Titus means to Content thee, prince. I will restore to thee the people's hearts and wean them from themselves. Andronicus, I do not flatter thee, but honor thee, and will do till I die. My faction, if they're strengthened with thy friends, I will most thankful be. And thanks of men, of honorable minds is honorable me. People of Rome and people's tribunes here, this suit I make that you create your emperor's eldest son, Lord Saturnine, whose virtues will, I hope, reflect on Rome as Titan's rays on earth, and ripen justice in this commonweal. Then, if you will elect by my advice, crown him, and say, long live our emperor. With the voices and applause of every sort, patricians and plebeians, we create Lord Saturninus, Rome's great emperor, and say, long live our emperor Saturnine. Long, long live our emperor Saturnine! <laughs> Titus Andronicus, for thy favors done to us in our election this day, I give thee thanks and part of thy deserts, and will with thee requite thy gentleness. And for, and on said Titus, to advance thy name and honorable family, Lavinia will I make my empress, Rome's royal mistress, mistress of my heart, and the sacred gift be on her spouse. Tell me, Andronicus, doth this motion please thee? It doth, my worthy lord, and in this match I hold me highly honored of your grace. And here, in sight of Rome and Saturnine, do I consecrate my sword, my chariot, and my prisoners. Presence well worthy of Rome's imperial lord. Receive them then, the, the tribute that I owe, my honors and sins humbled at thy feet. Thanks, noble Titus, father of my life, how proud I am of thee and thy gifts. Rome shall record, and when I do forget, the least of these unspeakable deserts. Romans, forget your fealty to me. Now, madam, you are prisoner to an emperor, to him that will use you for your honor and your state nobly and your followers. A goodly lady, trust me, of the hue that I would choose were I to choose anew. 
Clear up, fair queen, that cloudy countenance, thou chance of war hath wrought this change of cheer. Thou comest not to be made scorn in Rome. Princely shall be thy usage in every way. <laughs> Rest on my word, let not discontent daunt all your hopes, madam. He comforts you, can make you greater than the queen of gods. Lavinia, you are not displeased with this. Not I, my lord. Sith true nobility warrants these words in princely courtesy. Thanks, sweet Lavinia. <laughs> Romans, let us go. Ransomless here, we set our prisoners free. Proclaim our honors, lords, with trump and drum. Lord Titus, by your leave, this maid is mine. How, sir? Are you in earnest, then, my lord? I, noble Titus, am resolved with all to do myself this right and this reason. Suum cuique is our Roman justice. This prince in justice seeth but his own. And that he will, and shall, if Lucius lives. Traitors! Avant! Where is the emperor's guard? Traitors, my lord! Lavinia is surprised! Surprised? By whom? By him that justly may bear his betrothed from all the world away. Brothers, help to convey her hence away, and with my sword I'll keep this store safe. Follow, my lord, and I shall soon bring her back. My lord, you pass not here. What villain boy bars me my way in Rome? Help us, you uh, come! My lord, you are unjust, and more than so, in wrongful quarrel you have slain your son. Nor thou, nor he are any sons of mine. My sons would never so dishonor me, traitor. Restore Lavinia to the emperor. Dead, if you will, but not to be his wife that is another's lawful promised love. No, Titus. No, that her needs her not, nor her, nor thee, nor any of thy stock. I'll trust by leisure him that mocks me once. Be never, nor thy traitorous haughty sons, confederates all thus to dishonor me. Was there none else in Rome to make a stale but Saturnine? Full well, Andronicus, agree these deeds with that proud bag of thine that saidest, I beg the empire at thy hands. Oh, monstrous, what reproachful words are these? But go thy ways, give that changing peace to him that flourished for her with his sword. A valiant son-in-law thou shalt enjoy, one fit to bandy with thy lawless sons to ruffle in the commonwealth of Rome. These Ooh. words are razors to my wounded heart. And therefore, lovely Tamara, queen of Goths, that like the stately Phoebe amongst her nymphs dost overshine the gallant stands of Rome. If thou be pleased with my sudden choice, behold, I choose thee, Tamara, for my bride, and will create thee Empress of Rome. Mm. And here inside of heaven to Rome I swear, if Saturnine advance the Queen of Goths, she will a handmaid be to his desire, a loving nurse, a mother to his youth. Mm. Ascend, fair queen, Pantheon. Lords, accompany your noble emperor and his lovely bride. Sent by the heavens for Prince Saturnine, whose wisdom hath her fortune conquered. There shall we consummate our spousal rites. Ooh. I am not bid to wait upon this bride. Titus, when will thou want to walk alone, dishonored thus, and challenged of wrongs? Oh, Titus, see, oh, see what thou hast done, a bad quarrel slain a virtuous son. Oh, no, foolish with you. No, no son of mine, nor thou, nor these confederates in the deed that hath Dishonored all our family, unworthy brother, unworthy son. But let us give him burial as becomes. Give Musius burial with our brother. Traitors! Away! He rests not in this tomb, this monument five hundred years hath stood, which I have sumptuously re edified. Here, none but soldiers and Rome's servitors repose in fame, none basely slain in brawls. Bury him where you can, he rests not here. My lord, this is impiety in you. My nephew Musius has deeds to plead for him. He must be buried with his brethren. And shall, or him we will accomplish. And shall! What villain was it? Spake that word. He that would vouch in any place but here. What? Would you bury him in my despite? No, noble Titus, but entreat of thee to pardon Musius and to bury him. Marcus, even thou hast struck upon my crest, and with these Boys, mine honor thou hast wounded. My foes, I do repute you every one. So trouble me no more, but get you gone. He is not with himself. Let us withdraw. Not I, he is his bones be buried. Brother, for in that name doth nature plead. Father, in that name doth nature speed. Speak thou no more, if all the rest will speed. This renowned Titus, more than half my soul. Dear 
father, soul and substance of us all. Suffer thy brother Marcus to inter his noble nephew here in virtue's nest, that died in honour in Lavinia's cause. Thou art a Roman, be not barbarous. Rise. Marcus, rise. The dismalest day is this, the error I saw to be dishonoured by my sons in Rome. Well, bury him, and bury me the next. No man sheds tears for noble Mucius. He lives in fame that died in virtue's cause. My lord, to step out of these dreary dumps, how comes it that of a sudden the queen of Goths is thus advanced in Rome? I know not, Marcus, but I know it is. Whether by device or no, or the heavens can tell. Is she not then beholding to the man that brought her for this high good turn so far? Yes, and will nobly him remunerate. So, Bastianus, you have played your prize. God give you joy, sir, of your gallant bride. And you have yours, my lord. <laughs> I say no more, no wish, no less. And so, I take my leave. Tis good, sir. You are very short with us, but if we live, we'll be as sharp with you. My lord, what I have done, as best I may, answer I must and shall do with my life. Only thus much I give your grace to know. By all duties that I order Rome, this noble gentleman, Lord Titus here, is in my opinion and in honor wronged, that in the rescue of Lavinia, with his own hand did slay his youngest son, in zeal to you, and highly moved to wrath to be controlled that he frankly gave. Receive him then to favor Saturnine, that hath expressed himself in all his deeds a father and a friend to thee and Rome. Prince Bassianus, leave to plead my deeds, tis thou and those that have dishonored me. Rome and the righteous heavens be my judge, how I have ever loved and honored Saturn. My worthy lord, if ever Tamara were gracious in those princely eyes of thine, then hear me speak and indifferently for all. And at my sweet, sweet, pardon what is past. What, madam? We dishonored openly and basely put it up without revenge? Not so, my lord. The gods of Rome forfend I should be offered to dishonor you. But on mine honor dare I undertake, for good Lord Titus is in his mind, whose fury not dissembled speaks his griefs, then, at my suit, look graciously on him. He was not so noble a friend on vain suppose, nor with sour looks afflict his gentle heart. Be one at last. Dissemble all your griefs and discontents. You are but newly planted in your throne. Less than the people, and patricians too, upon a just survey take Titus's part, and so supplant you for ingratitude, which Rome reputes to be a heinous sin. Yield it entreats, and then let me alone. I will find a day to massacre them all, raise their faction and their family, the cruel father and his treacherous sons, to whom I sued for my dear son's life and make them know what tis let a queen kneel in the streets and beg for grace in vain. Come, come, <laughs> come sweet Emperor, come Andronicus. Take up this good old man and cheer the heart that dies in tempest of thy angry frown. Rise, Titus, rise, my empress hath prevailed. I thank you, your majesty, and her, my lord. These words, these looks infuse new life in me. Titus. <laughs> I am now a corporate in Rome, a Roman now adopted family, and must advise the emperor for his good. This day all quarrels die, Andronicus. For you, Prince Bassianus, I have passed my word and promise to the emperor that you will be more mild and tractable, and fear not, Lord, than you, Lavinia. By my advice, all humbled on your knees. You shall ask pardon of his majesty. We do. And vow to have an end to his highness that what we did was mildly as we might, <laughs> tendering our sister's honor and our own. That on mine honor here I do protest. Away and talk not, trouble us no more. Nay, hey, nay, hey, sweet Emperor, mm -hmm. we must all be friends. The tribune and his nephews kneel for Greece. Grace, I will not be denied. Sweetheart, look back. Marcus, for thy sake and thy brother's here, and as for my lovely Tamara's entreats, I do remit these young men's heinous faults. Stand up. Lavinia, though you left me like a churl, I found a friend, and as sure as death I swore I would not part a bachelor from the priest. Come, if the emperor's court can feast two brides, you are my guests, Lavinia, and your friends. 
This day shall be a love day, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> Shocked and sits aloft, secure from thunder's crack or lightning flash. Then, Aaron, arm thy heart and fit thy thoughts, and mount the loft of thy imperial mistress, and mount her pitch, whom thou in triumph long hast prisoner held, fettered in amorous chains and fast abound in Aaron's charming eyes and his Prometheus hydro cases. Away with slavish weeds, seraphic thoughts, I'll be bright, shine in pearl and gold, mm. to wait upon this new made empress. To wait, said I, to wanton with this queen, this goddess, this Semiramis's nymph, this siren that will charm Rome Saturnine, to see a shipwreck in its common wheels. Hello, what storm is this? The <laughs> Chiron, thy youth, walk with thy with one's edge, and then it's to intrude where I am grace, and they thought thou knows that to be. Demetrius, thou dost overween it all, and so in this to bear me down with grace. Tis not the difference of a year or two makes thee more gracious or me less fortunate. Oh. I am as able and as fit as thou to serve and to deserve my mistress's grace, oh. and that my sword upon thee shall approve and plead my passions for Lavinia's love. Clubs, clubs, these lovers will not keep the peace. Meanwhile, sir, with what little skill I have, full well shalt thou perceive how much I dare. Ay, oh, boy, bring me so brave! <laughs> <laughs> Why, how now, lords? So near the emperor's palace do you draw and maintain such a quarrel openly? For shame, put up. Now, that the gods that warlike goth do adore, <laughs> this petty rabble will undo us all. Why, and think you now how dangerous it is to jet upon a prince's right? What? The Zavinia becomes so loose, a Bastianus, so degenerate, that for her love such quarrels may be broached without controlment, justice, or revenge. Young lords, beware. Should the Empress know this discord's ground, the music would not please. I care not. I, you, she, and all the world. I love Lavinia more than all the world. <laughs> Young lady, learn thou to make some meaner choice. Lavinia is thine elder brother's coat. <laughs> Why are ye mad? Or know ye not in Rome how furious and impatient they be? And cannot for competitors in love. I tell you, you do but plot your deaths by this device. Aaron, a thousand deaths would I propose to achieve her whom I love. To achieve her? How? <laughs> Why makes that it so strange? She is a woman, therefore maybe wooed. <laughs> She's a woman, therefore maybe won. <laughs> she is Lavinia. And therefore must be loved. Oh. <laughs> what man? More water glides by the mill than what's the miller of. And easy it is for a cutlow to steal a shy of me now. If no Bassianus be the emperor's brother, better than he have worn Vulcan's badge. Aye, as good as Saturninus, man. <laughs> then why should he despair that knows to court it with words, fair looks, and liberality? Mm -hmm. What? Hast not thou who often struck a doe and bore her cleanly by the keeper's nose? Why, then it seems some certain snatch or so would serve your turns. Ah, so the turn were served. Aaron, thou hast hit it. Would have hit it too. <laughs> then should not we be tired with this to do? Hark ye, hark ye, and you were such fools to square for this. Would it offend you, then, that both should speak? Faith, not me, but nor me. So I won. For shame, be friends and join for that you are. As beauty your course and lingering languishment must we pursue, and I have found the path. My lords, a solemn hunting is in hand. There, where the lovely Roman ladies troops, the forest walks are wide and spacious, and many unfrequented plots mm -hmm. there are, fitted by kind for a rape. <laughs> Single youth of them, this dainty doe, and strike her home by force. If not by words, this way, or not at all, stand you in hope. Come, come, my empress, with her witty wit of vengeance consecrate, where we are quick with all that we intend. The woods are, the woods are ruthless, dreadful, death and dull. Dare speak, 
and strike brave boys, and serve your lust shadow from heaven's eye, and revel in Lavinia's treasury. Oh, <laughs> thy counsel, lad, smells of no cowardice. Sit thus out in the fuss, till I find a stream to cool this heat, a charm to calm these fits. Just stag up from Anna's <laughs> <laughs> The hunt is up, <laughs> the moon is bright and gray, the fields are fragrant, and the woods are green. Uh, let us uncouple here and make a bay to wake the emperor and his lovely bride, and rouse the prince, and ring a hunter's peal, and that all the court may echo with the noise. Sons. Let it be your charge, as it is mine, to attend the emperor's person carefully. I have been troubled in my sleep this night, but dawning day new comforts have inspired. Many good morrows to your majesty, madam, as many and as good to you. I promise at your grace a hunter's peal. And you have rung it lustfully, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat too early for the new married lady. <laughs> Lavinia, how say you? I say no. I have been brought awake two hours and more. Come on, then. Horse and chariots let us have, and to our sport. Madam, now shall ye see our Roman hunting. <laughs> I have thoughts my lord will rouse the proudest panther in their sleep and climb the highest promontory top. And I have horse will follow where the game makes way and run like swallows o'er the plain. <laughs> Chiron, we have not we with horse nor hound, but hope to pluck it in your ground. He that had wit would think I have not. To bury so much gold under a tree, and never after to inherit. Mm -hmm. Let him that think me so objectly know that this gold must coin a stratagem, which, cunningly affected, will beget a very excellent piece of villainy. And so repose, sweet gold, for their unrest that have their arms out of the empress's chest. My lovely Aaron, what brother so sad? And everything doth make a gleeful loss. The birds chant melody on every bush, the snake lies rolled in the cheerful sun. The green leaves quiver with the cooling wind and make a checkered shadow on the ground. Under their sweet shade, Aaron let it sit. And whilst the babbling echo mocks the hound, replying truly to well tuned horns, as if a double hunt were heard at once, let us sit down and mark their yelping noise. Madam, though Venus govern your desires, Saturn is dominant. What signifies my deadly standing eye, my silence, my Cloudy melancholy, my fleece of woolly hair that now uncurls, even has an adder when she doth unroll to do some fatal execution? No, madam, these are no venereal signs. Vengeance is in my heart, death is in my hand, blood and vengeance are hammering in my head. Hark, Tamara, empress of my soul, which never holds more heaven to rest in thee. This is the day of doom for Bastianus. His Philomel must lose her tongue today. Thy sons make pillage of her chastity and wash their hands in Bastianus' blood. See <gasps> Stasel's letter. Take it up. I read it. Give the king this fatal blood and squirrel. Question me no more. Your response. I hear comes the parcel of their hopeful beauty, which dreads not yet their lives' destruction. Oh, my sweet more, sweeter sweet than life. No more, great empress. Bastianus comes. Be cross with him. And I'll go, I'll go fetch thy sons and back thy quarrel. What's the word that Who have we here? From his royal empress, unfurnished of her well beseeming troop? Or is it Diana? Have it like her who hath abandoned her holy groves to see general hunting in the forest? <laughs> Saucy controller of our private steps. And by the power that some say Dion had, the temple should be planted presently with horns, as was acting. <laughs> and the hounds should drive upon their new transformed limbs, unmannerly intruder as thou art. Under your patience, gentle empress, tis thought you had a goodly gift in horning. 
and to be doubted that you were more and you were single forced to try experiments. Jove, shield your husband from his hounds today. Pity they should think of her as sad. The king, my brother, shall have known of this. Aye, for these slips have made him noted long. Good king to be so mightily abused. Why have I patience to endure all this? Go now, dear sovereign, and your gracious mother. I love your highness with so pale and oh, vain. Have I not reason to think you to look pale? These two have enticed me hither to this place of bear to test if you see it is. And when they showed me this of a hard pit unto the body of a dismal you, they told me they would find me here and lead me to this miserable death. Oh, and then they called me foul, adulterous, lascivious god in all the bitterest terms that ever ear did hear to such effect. And had me wondrous fortune come, this vengeance on me, had they executed. Revenge it, that you love your mother's life, or be ye not henceforth called my children. This is a witness that I am thy son. Ah! <laughs> and this for me struck home to show my son. <laughs> to some secret hole and make his dead trunk pillow to our mouth. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, but if we can't do honey you desire, let not the swap out with us both to live. Oh, Tamara, that Paris the woman's fate. I will not hear her speak. Away with her. <laughs> Sweet Lord, entreat her, hear me but a word. Listen for now. Let it be your glory to see her tears. But be your heart to them as unlegged flint to drops of rain. <laughs> when did the tiger's young ones teach the dam? Oh, do not learn her wrath. She taught it thee. The milk thou sucked this from her did turn to marble. <sighs> Even at thy teeth thou hadst thy tyranny. Yet every mother breathes not sons alike. Do thou entreat her, show a woman pity. What? Would thou have me prove myself a bastard? <laughs> Tis true. The raven doth not hatch a lark. Yet I have heard, or could I find it now? The lion moved with pity, did it endure to have its princely paws scared over the way? <laughs> so some say that ravens foster forlorn children, the whilst their own birds vanish in their nests. Oh, beat in me, though thy hard heart say no. Nothing so kind, but something pitiful. I know not what it means. <laughs> oh, wait with her. Ah! Oh, let me teach thee! Oh, be not under it! Oh, <coughs> thy deaf ears! That's thou, and never person offended me. Even for his sake, am I pitiless. Remember, boys, I poured forth tears in vain to save your brother from the sacrifice, but fierce Andronicus would not relent. Therefore, away with her, and use her as you will. The worst of her, the better loved of me. Oh, Sarah, be called the gentle queen! And with thy own hands kill me in this place. For tis not life that I have begged so long. For I was slain when Bassianus died. Oh, beg us all then. Fond woman, let me go. Tis present death I beg. And one thing more, that womanhood denies my tongue to tell. Oh, keep me from their worse than killing lust. And tumble me into some loathsome pit whenever man's eye may behold my body. Do this and be a charitable murderer. So. Should I rob my sweet sons of their fate? <laughs> no. Let them satisfy their lust on me. Boy! For thou hast taken too long! No! 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 Beastly creature! The blotted enemy to our general name! Confusion fall! No! 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 Bring thou her husband! This be the pit where Aaron can us hide his body! Farewell, my sons. See that you 
Now let my harp no merry cheer indeed until all the Andronicae be made away. Now will I hence to seek my lovely more and let my spleenful sons this trial before.